have a special guest at the close of the service. We, we're going to give people opportunity to be prayed for. Uh, you know, if your world seems like it's been shaken, rocked, you know, we'll be praying. We'll, we'll have an opportunity to pray for you to close the service. You have something that's really on your heart and mind that's really struggle for you. We want to be able to pray for you. But also, we're going to receive an offering for uh, scholarships for our colleges. So this morning during the service, Dr. Anderson is the president of North Central University where Pastor Alston, Pastor Luke, Pastor Zach, Pastor Courtney, Pastor Jesse that was with us, they were all students there. We've been blessed by the university plus others that are going there now and will go there. It's a great university. However, some of you are evangel grads, so if you decide even though Dr. Anderson is here, you want to help with scholarships at Evangel, it doesn't bother because he'd rather you do that than just sit on your wallet, okay? So at the close, if you want to help with the scholarships to students, then we're going to give that opportunity for you to give. Dr. Gordon Anderson, would you come? He is one of his last things he's doing is preaching for us. He's been a great friend. He's an orator. He's a scholar. He's got a... Uh, 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 degrees that I can't even understand and all of that, but he's going out uh, after being 170, or is it 70? 70, yeah, 70. 70 <laughs> years old, he's gonna, he's gonna retire from that and do, go into another journey. And he has been here several times, you're in for a real treat, but I want us to appreciate the many, many years that he served at North Central University. Let's give him a warm welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you, love you, thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Did I get this button pushed on okay? Can you hear me? All right, he told me to push the button for three seconds. It's on, it's just not working right. Okay, well, let's get it working right, so we'll... Uh... It's on. All right. It's so... on, is it just shortened out? Okay, well, we just have a bit here. Okay. We'll go to plan two. Plan two, that's good. Seems like it sounds like it's making some noise. Is it noise, doing huh? okay? Is it all right or no? All of the speakers go testing. One, two, three. Exactly. I, you let me know if you need this. All right, we'll make a change. There we go. Well, instead of testing one, two, three, you could sing the Star Spangled Banner or something, but we always say testing. There, it sounds like it. Can you hear me well? Can you? If you can't hear me, raise your hand. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> you got it, that was good, wasn't it? Yep, that was good. I want to give away a couple of CDs to uh, some high school students. Any high school students in the building in this service? Anywhere, high school, all right, oh, okay. Now, we're going to do this real fast, so get ready to be quick, because if you're not quick, you're not going to get your CD. I've got two of them. I'm going to give one of them to someone who has a birthday this month. Ready? Not this month. Anybody? Next month. Oh, over here this month? All right, move it. Come get your CD. <clears throat> Very good. Okay, I think we're, we're going to make a change. Should I turn, turn this one off? Push the button. Yep. Take we'll it away. Start. Okay. We're good. In all of these years of ministry, I've found that if you just take a couple of seconds to get it right at the beginning, it helps the rest of the service go well. All right. I have another one. And this will be for someone with a birthday. This is the month of May, right? A birthday in the month of June. Ready? Anybody? High school student, month of June. Okay. June? No? Ready? Okay, now, you know sometimes what they do is they throw these into the audience. By the way, I'm going to hit somebody on, a, on their head, so I won't throw it. Congratulations to you. <clears throat> it's always fun to give something away. The um, CD that I just gave away the theme song is Always Remains, and uh, we put it on the web, and there have been 75,000 hits on that one song. So it's our 
recorded live in the sanctuary at North Central. Hope you will enjoy that and uh, remember North Central. I've been in North Central 35 years. I started June 1st, 1982. I am finishing June 1st this year, 2017, 35 years. Exactly one half my life. I'm 70, and um, it has been absolutely great to be involved with young people, Christian education, Christian higher education. And uh, at North Central, used to be Bible Institute, then Bible College, then North Central University. I love young people. Uh, They gave me a mug here a few months ago, great big mug, and it says, the oldest youth pastor in the Assemblies of God. And I am. First of all, I'm probably the oldest, but I'm a youth pastor. And they say president and all of that, and that's good and fine. But um, to be a, a leader and a senior leader, a kind of a grandfather figure now to the students, is, has been a great joy for me and my wife, Diane. So it has been now time to turn over the reins of leadership to Scott Hagen coming to North Central. His daughter went to North Central. And uh, that occurs at midnight, May 31st, just not many days from now. So uh, this service is the last time I will preach in public as the president of North Central University. And uh, the bulletin, I am going to keep this bulletin, Pastor, because on the back, the pastoral staff and the names that you named, I mean, I just swelled with pride as you named the names of these wonderful young people currently here serving on staff, others that have attended North Central, and you've caught me and said hello. So it's a memory, and I have a memory box at home. I do not keep those bad letters that you get every once in a while. I throw them away. If they're not signed, I don't even read them. And, um, but this, I'll remember this beautiful day in Iowa with wonderful friends and the names of some students. So uh, you'll be a part of my memory and history. Thank you for making it a wonderful memory. I appreciate it very much. If you want to stay young, hang out with the young. If you want to die young, try to keep up with them. <laughs> And, uh, it's really been interesting that uh, as a senior uh, leader, that um, we've gotten well, along so well with young people. Here's what I say. Young people don't want me to be like them. I can't do it anyway. I mean, I can't dress cool like the young people dress cool. I could no more show up in a pair of jeans with holes in the knees than I could do you know, I can't do that. They don't want me to be like them. They just want me to like them. Okay? And that's a good lesson in life, to love people and care for them. So it's been great. Well, um, if you have your Bibles, I'd like you to find two passages of Scripture. We're going to emphasize a great lesson from the Word of God this morning. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. And after we have read that, we will go to Hebrews chapter 12. At the end of the Sermon on the Mount, the Constitution and Bylaws for the Kingdom of God, Jesus came preaching the Kingdom, the reign and the rule of God, the rules of God and the rule of God, the power and authority of God over His created universe. And the Sermon on the Mount is often referred to as the Constitution and Bylaws of the kingdom of God. In chapter 7, follow along in verse 24 and following. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts upon them may be compared to a wise man who built his house upon the rock. The rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew, burst against that house, and yet it did not fall, for it had been founded on the rock. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act upon them will be like a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. The rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew, burst against that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Writer of Hebrews repeats this principle, but in language just a little bit different in Hebrews chapter 12. 
beginning in verse 25, Hebrews 12, 25. See to it, pay attention, get with the program, that you do not refuse him who is speaking. For if those did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, much less shall we escape who turn away from him who warns from heaven. His voice shook the earth then, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. And the expression, yet once more, denotes the removing of those things which can be shaken as of created things in order that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we receive a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us show gratitude by which we may offer to God an acceptable service with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. The words of Jesus are a picture, an image. It's a very clear image, easy to understand. Two kinds of people, wise and foolish. Two kinds of building, temporary and permanent. In Hebrews, it says that there are two kinds of things, things that can be shaken and those things that cannot be shaken. In both of these passages, you see that people make a choice. See to it that you do not refuse. Refusing is a choice. See to it that you do not turn away. Turning away is a choice. Sermon on the Mount, he says, some people hear and they act upon the Word of God that they've heard. Other people hear and they do not act upon it. That is a human choice. Uh, this last week, we had our board meeting, we had board training, we had a wonderful um, individual involved in education. And in talking about the whole business of education, he said that, he said, I'm a, I'm a combination of a Calvinist, sovereignty of God, and an Arminian, freedom of the human will. But he put it this way, Calvinism, sovereignty of God, and Arminianism, the stupidity of the human race. <laughs> and... Um, the, the, Jesus didn't say it exactly that way. He picked a bit more delicate word, but it's a powerful word, a foolish man, the fool. And the contrast here is between the wise and the foolish. There are two kinds of things in this world, permanent and temporary, spiritual and material. Shakeable, unshakable, things that last, things that don't last. And there are two kinds of people, wise and foolish. That is a very, very simple lesson that is easy to remember, and I really do trust that in the preaching of this principle, this truth, that it could really grab our hearts because we are all in school. We are all paying tuition. <clears throat> the tuition is the pains of life. School is the school of life. And then maybe you've heard it said that uh, there's a school of hard knocks, right? School colors are black and blue. And the graduates really know their stuff. How many of you know that life is hard? That it has bumps. Uh, more than bumps. Uh, this passage that Jesus gave us says a storm comes. If you look at the wording of this passage, it's uh, two passages almost identical, only a couple of words change. But for both the wise man who hears and acts upon the Word of God, a storm comes. To the fool who hears and does not act upon the Word of God, a storm comes. You see, being a person of the kingdom of God is not getting an exemption from the storms of life. It's getting protection and provision to get you through the storms of life. Could you say amen to that? The storms are going to come. We had a lady in our church in Portland years ago. I remember what she said. You've heard it said that into every life a little rain must fall. She said, that's not true. Here's what's true. Into every life an occasional hurricane will come. And that is true for all of us. And the wonderful thing about being a person of the kingdom, 
born again, saved, forgiven of our sins. The storms will come. Sometimes people think becoming a Christian means you get a pass. You don't get a pass. You get a provision. You don't get an exemption. You get the power of God to stand with you during the hurricanes of life. Thank God for that. The last few years, I've had two surgery. Now, that just is part of the proof of the frailty of our human makeup, right? The frailty of it all. And I can't say, well, I'm a Christian. I should never get sick. No, it's when I am sick I can pray and God can hear my prayer. I should never have problems. No, it's, it's not that. It's that when I have problems, I have divine provision for the problems. I'm not alone. Oh, the, the wonderful worship choruses we sang. We're never alone. We never have to do it alone. I was born on a farm and ranch in western Nebraska, grew up in eastern Colorado. Out there, the first time we came here, when we first moved to Minnesota, I was amazed. I had never seen dirt like southern Minnesota and like you have here in Iowa. All the dirt we had back there in Colorado was kind of tan, right? Just kind of light tan. Here the dirt is, the dirt is black and rich, and, you know, I just love it to see the uh, fields all plowed up. It's beautiful to watch and the uh, productivity. But back where I grew up, the ground was hard. Much of it was marginal. A lot of it should never have been plowed up. It should have been left as prairie for pasture. Uh, it was good for pasture. That ground was hard, really, really hard dirt. And um, so hard that um, some of the homesteaders and farmers and ranchers would simply take logs or timbers, lay them down on the ground, and build a building on top of them. No foundation, no concrete, no rock, just timbers and a building. And you know what? It works. It works absolutely fine. It works perfectly for a while. It works until the storms have come and gone, the rain has fallen, the snow has come, the freezing and thawing has had its work. And I don't know if any of you may be from that part of the country or have driven through it. Uh, you see sometimes these pictures, uh, photographs of old buildings and old barns and barn wood. You know, do you realize some of that old barn wood is a whole lot more expensive than brand new wood is these days? <laughs> it's, it's weathered, you know. Well, it is. It's kind of pretty. But those buildings, I grew up in that country. You would see these old barns and buildings. Now they are not standing straight if they're standing at all. They're tilted over to one side. They're falling apart because the foundation was not good for the long run. It was only good for the short run. And you know, here in life, what a lesson this is, this word picture, this image. You can get away with building with inferior materials. You can get away without the kingdom of God. It'll work just fine for you for a while until the ultimate realities we face. One of them is that it's appointed unto every one of us to die. It's appointed. It's not a matter of what. It's only a matter of when and how. We understand that. You know what's really crazy about that? This ultimate reality is one that we ignore the most. I, I found just a couple of years ago that I am living with a condition that will take my life. It is incurable. Uh, I'm sorry it is true. There's nothing they can do about it. And uh, when you're living with an incurable condition that will take your life, it sobers you up. It makes you more serious. It makes you look at your grandkids differently and live life differently. What they told me is that I have a condition. It will kill me. It's called aging. Okay. I tell you I'm dying of a terminal condition and you laugh at me. What kind of a congregation do you have here, Weaver? People that laugh in the face of a dying man. <clears throat> Let me make the point. If I had told you I have cancer, not a single person would have laughed. Not a one. You would have probably went, oh. So, I mean, I don't think anybody would have said, <laughs> that's a hoot. 
You know, that's fun. No, you wouldn't have. What is it about the most real reality we all will face that it can be a laughing matter and a condition that only a few will face is a sobering matter? You know, don't we think crazy about some things? But we're all going the same direction. The question is this, how, how will we go? We, uh, I've done many, many funerals in my life. I buried a lot of family members. Buried my grandfather, 93 years of age. And uh, buried other people. I buried my grandmother. And uh, it, it, Christians are odd, kind of funny the way they do funerals. We go to the service. We cry. I'm a crier. Do you know I keep my... I keep a handkerchief in my Bible at all times because I get moved. So when I get moved, I'm prepared. I just, uh, when I get moved, I sometimes leak. I, I weep. I preached my granddad's funeral, and I cried. I loved my granddad. I'm named after him. And um, loved him. But, so we go to the service, and then we cry, and then we go to the church basement and eat chicken and tell funny stories and laugh. What a schizophrenic bunch of people. But here's, here's, here's the lesson. There is a time to weep because loss and grief bring great sorrow, and we weep together. But the reason we go and eat chicken and tell funny stories is because death is not the end of the story, because we know the resurrection has come. Oh, this song that we sang, you know, death was arrested and new life began. Can you say amen? So when I preached my granddad's funeral, I, I lifted a line from a, a Kojic preacher back in New York. <clears throat> he preached a service, and he said, now some of you people, and he was hard on him. he said, we're going to walk by this casket, you're going to look down at this dead body, and some of you are going to say goodbye, because you'll never ever see this person again. That's hard. He said, but others of you, you're going to walk by this casket, and you're not going to say goodbye. You're going to say, good night. I'll see you in the morning. And the choir took off. In that great get up morning, fairly well, fair, you know, it was a great funeral service. In that great get up morning, fare you well. So I lifted that line, and I said, when I walk by this casket, I'm not going to tell my grandpa Goodbye. I'm just going to tell him, good night, Pop. I'll see you in the morning. Amen? Because the reality is some things will change. The body will change. Granddad was 93 when he died. But he was born again. And someday, in that great getting up morning, we'll all say farewell to this earth and go to our permanent home. This home is not permanent. What does the Bible say? We're pilgrims. We're just passing through. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through to the real home. And so the lesson of life is that we need to learn the difference between that which lasts and that which doesn't, the things that really matter and the things that really don't matter, the difference between spirit and flesh, the difference between the eternal and matter. The Bible says God has promised that He will shake the heavens and the earth. God is the one that is shaking. Why does He do this? To give you and me an opportunity to learn the difference between those two realms. That's why we're here this morning. And Pastor, a moment ago you prayed. You know, we closed our eyes and I, when you did that, my heart just was so moved within me. Men and women gathered in a building and you gave people an opportunity to say, I want to go from one side to the other, from darkness to life, from, from that which ends in death to that which ends in eternal life. That's what we're all about in this day, this service, this church, but every day of our lives. Been in education for many, many years. The joy of my life has been to work with young people, and not only just to give them education, but to couple with education, transformation. The uniqueness of our schools in our movement is that it's not just about education. Education is good, 
We believe in it. I call that the professional preparation. And it's good to be good at some things and to get education so you can do those things well. But that's not all. The uniqueness of our Bible-based, Christ-centered, Spirit-filled schools, Evangel, North Central, all of our schools, is we don't stop with just information and education. We are committed to transformation. That's not just the professional preparation. That's the prophetic preparation, (laughs) because God has poured out His Spirit upon the body of Christ. And we go out not just as doctors and lawyers and preachers and missionaries and evangelists and business people, but we go out as witness and testimony to the eternal things. Heaven and earth are going to pass away, but the Word of God will never pass away, you see. Isn't that a wonderful, wonderful truth? So here we are in a church again, contemplating again what it means. What's life all about? What does the future hold? I just got word yesterday that a good friend of mine has been diagnosed with cancer. Stage four in his lymph nodes, liver, kidney, and bones. This is that momentary notice. This is that phone call that we all get from time to time that says, my life has been rocked. My life has been shaken. I will be talking with him. There is the miracle working power of God. There is healing. But short of healing, there is death. He and I will reflect on both. But here's the reality of all. It really doesn't matter. He will live in victory. No matter what this life has for him, no matter what the body may do, no matter what the doctors can do or can't do, and I don't understand the mystery of why some people are healed and others are not, that's in the hands of God. But I understand this. There's ultimate victory for those who are in Jesus. There is ultimate victory. When their body is shaken, their soul remains eternal. That's the ultimate reality that we live with. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken, so those things that cannot be shaken may remain. I'd like you to bow your heads with me, and I'd like to have a prayer with you. Pastor has said, and I'm so glad we will end this service with a time of prayer. The prayer counselors will come down. But right here, dear God, I pray in Jesus' name, in the name of the Savior, in the name of the Creator of all things, the men and women gathered in this building today wrestling with one realm or the other, the shakeable or the unshakable, the eternal or the temporary, caught in a battle between spirit and flesh, Give us victory today, Lord, I pray. Give us victory and help us decide to follow Jesus, not refuse Him, and to hear His words and to act upon them and to build our lives upon the solid rock so that when and as the storms of life come, we will stand not only in time, but also in eternity. Thank you, Lord. Amen.